Thank you for joining this OncLive Peer Exchange, a global perspective on sequencing treatments in gastroesophageal cancers. Chemotherapy still plays a significant role in the treatment of advanced gastroesophageal cancers. However, recent progress has extended survival and is shifting the landscape towards less toxic regimens. This OncLive Peer Exchange panel of international experts in gastroesophageal cancers will focus on the current understanding of molecular subtypes and how the availability of newer treatment options is prompting discussions on sequencing. I am Dr. Johanna Bendel, Chief Development Officer and Director of the Drug Development Unit Nashville at Sarah Cannon Research Institute in Nashville, Tennessee. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Dr. Peter Enzinger, Associate Professor of Medicine and Director of the Center for Esophageal and Gastric Cancer at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute of Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. Welcome, Peter. You have a really long title. <laughs> Dr. Yelena Jangjingian, Chief, now Chief, of the Gastrointestinal Oncology Service at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, New York. Thank you so much for your new busy role to Thanks join us today. Me. Thank you. Dr. Kohei Shitara, Chief of the Department of Gastrointestinal Oncology at the National Cancer Center Hospital East in Kashiwa, Japan. Welcome. Welcome. Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> and, Dr. and Professor Eric Van Kutzum, a professor at the University of Leuven and head of digestive oncology at the University of Hospitals in Leuven, Belgium. Welcome. Thank you. Professor. Professor. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin. So friends, we're going to start off with some basics, talking a little bit about global trends in gastroesophageal cancers. I'm so happy we have this group here today to represent uh, the U.S., the EU, and Japan in terms of looking at treating gastroesophageal cancers. So there's a lot of discussion about different epidemiologies of gastroesophageal cancers for in different parts of the world. So Peter, tell us a little bit about the thoughts behind East versus West uh, in gastroesophageal cancers. Sure, sure. So I think one of the interesting aspects of, of gastric cancer in, in the United States is that it's a success story, right? So uh, basically, back in the 1920s, 1930s, this was probably the leading cause of cancer death in the United States. And uh, with the implementation of refrigeration, improvements in health, uh, um, uh, sterilization of foods, uh, preservatives, the incidence of gastric cancer has come down dramatically in the United States, uh, so that's no longer a top 10 cancer. Um, now that's uh, really uh, a, a phenomenal success, uh, and in many ways in the United States, we uh, sort of now are uh, changing our minds about preservatives and, and, uh, and trying to eat a more natural diet, but it's interesting what that's going to do with our incidence of gastric cancer. So. Um, in comparison, I think, in, uh, in the world, uh, esophageal gastric cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death. And that's primarily due to the high incidence in East Asia, uh, where it really is uh, a significant problem and remains a significant problem. In Europe, I think it's uh, still, I think, the sixth leading cause of cancer death. Uh, so uh, I think it's very interesting how different parts of the world uh, have varying incidences, and I think it really has to do in, in many ways with the diet that is eaten uh, and uh, to a lesser extent uh, with H. pylori, although I think there the incidence is relatively similar across the continents. Um, but uh, it is a, uh, a phenomenon that uh, is, is remarkable. So, so Yelena, New York City, headquarters of the Power Lunch. Right, so we were concerned a while ago about an increasing incidence in what they were calling the rich white man's disease, sort of an association of, of different risk factors with the lower esophageal cancers. Can you tell us sort of what the thought was behind that, with it, particularly in the Western countries? Sure. Well, first of all, New Yorkers don't eat lunch. <laughs> we're too busy. Go, go, go. And I think some of it is environmental. Uh, and to Peter's point, distal gastric cancer is on the decline worldwide, but alarmingly, GE junction, gastroesophageal junction adenocarcinomas are on the rise, particularly in uh, folks without significant any family history or risk factors. 
reflux uh, and some of the uh, obesity and environmental factors may play a role. But in my clinic, there's an epidemic of uh, you know, people in their 40s, 50s who exercise and do everything right uh, and uh, still develop this uh, serious problem. And uh, a lot of it, what I tell my folks, my patients, is that it's a combination of the environmental exposures, but also the patient's vulnerabilities and the germline uh, predispositions to these tumors. And that's the important area to explore. Yes, we're definitely going to touch on that a little bit later. Dr. Shitara, in, in Japan, you screen yeah. for gastric cancers. Tell us a little bit about the thoughts about epidemiology there. Yes, the incidence of gastric cancer is slightly decreasing recently in Japan, but uh, still 150,000 patients are diagnosed as gastric cancer, even in recently, and uh, approximately 50,000 patients die from gastric cancer, even now. So screening is very important to detect early disease, which is uh, uh, cured by local therapy, but uh, still many patients diagnosed as advanced, as advanced disease. So one important epidemiological factor in Japan is actually Helicobacter pylori infection, <coughs> very common in older age. But incidence is also decreased in younger age. So that might be the one reason of decreased incidence of gastric cancer in Japan. Another important uh, factor is maybe salt included food, salty yeah. food in yeah. Japan. It's a traditional food, which may be one of the cause of high incidence of gastric cancer in Japan. I actually lied, Elena. Let's talk about let's talk about the genetics. Yeah. So, so what are the high <coughs> risk risk groups? What do you test for when you see somebody? Sure. With so, so the uh, historical perspective on uh, hereditary predisposition syndromes with gastric cancer are the sort of the rare, uh, the, are the very rare uh, subsets. So, hereditary and diffuse gastric cancer, which is a very strict. Uh, criteria of who, who qualifies for testing generally, it's uh, patients with strong family history or patients who are younger than 35. And it's been uh, described with the signet ring cell type subtype specifically. And for those patients, we recommend uh, for their loved ones to be screened uh, for their families and in uh, carriers of the gene because there's such high penetrance of the CDH1. In CDH1 germline mut mutant patients, prophylactic gastrectomies are recommended. That uh, subset does not have a therapeutic complication yet. Uh, uh, other germline syndromes, such as Lynch syndrome or hypermutated MSI uh, syndrome, is a very important syndrome uh, therapeutically. And actually, um, data that's being presented at this Congress from our group and Sophia Stadler shows that hypermutated or MSI tumors specifically, 16% uh, of them may have Lynch uh, predisposition syndromes or germline Lynch without any other significant family history. So now as you know, these uh, panels of next generation sequencing are identifying these patients, it's important to test them on the germline. Beyond that, you know, be be beyond FAP and some of the um, you know, Putiager and other rare syndromes, the gastric and esophageal uh, genetic predisposition syndromes just haven't been well described. And so there's a lot of effort now as we're getting these uh, you know, PAN and GS panels to also look at uh, germline data, uh, to look at a whole exome analysis, particularly at our institution, we're very interested in young population, to understand, to answer this question, this existential question, why me? You know, why did I get this cancer? So Kohei, in Japan, do you see a lot of hereditary gastric cancer as well? So actually, no. Yeah. Very few patients, but, uh, but uh, still, some patients had a Lynch syndrome with gastric cancer and the CDH1 loss and the black mutation. Uh, we, we have uh, some patients, yeah. but uh, incidence is uh, less than 5% among the all gastric cancer patients. Yes, but I this think is the, a uh, Ashkenazi important. Jewish population was important. Thank you for bringing yeah. that up, BRCA alterations. Yeah.